Well, good morning, everyone. This is Half Full Monty here, uh, and uh, there's uh, a little video I'm going to make. It's a follow-up I've been planning on doing for quite a while, but things get in the way. But so I'm going to try to do it today. Uh, this is a, a rehash of everything you wanted to know about a casita, uh, but was afraid to ask. Uh, the uh, uh, if you didn't see my first video, you can look on down uh, in my on my channel and uh, see all the uh, that video and uh, what all uh, is on it. Uh, it was basically a video on a 2019. We got new uh, Spirit Deluxe and uh, what we've done to it as far as upgrades and uh some other little issues so um since we got the casita in 2019 um uh, we've been averaging probably around 50 something nights a year in it and we went 20,000 miles uh that being said uh we've had a few little issues with it but really nothing uh major uh the uh upgrades have all seemed to work pretty well uh my favorite is still the the what i call the disco light i have a little control for it uh that uh i keep a, a little velcro there and then in here also a velcro here by the bed where I can work the control. It lights it up a whole lot more in here. And uh, anyway, we like that upgrade. Still do, still working strong. Uh, inside here, uh, upgrades from last time. Uh, really uh, not a whole lot uh, of new stuff. But a few things, a few items. Uh, in the closet here, we have the Kathy's closet that was installed by Frank. And uh, we've also installed the uh, inside light there. Uh, the light has uh, a uh, strip that lights the side and then another one that's here in the back that lights the back. Uh, it's okay. Uh, the uh, uh, light right here across from it actually did a pretty good job as long as you didn't stand in the way of the light. So now between those two lights, uh, you can see quite well in there. Uh, it's kind of not organized. Uh, we just got back from our summer trip to Colorado. And uh, we also, this little air filter here, we tried that out on this trip. Uh, and uh, it seemed to help uh, on that. Now, we uh, had a little issue uh, in our sink. I uh, haven't upgraded this sink to a deeper sink, uh, something I always wanted, but it's like, uh, that's, that's a bit of a hassle, it's pretty expensive, and you know, the sink works pretty good. But, the problem we had is uh, the gray water in the sink, uh, you got an air bubble in it, and at random times, it would fill up, and the only way you can get the air bubble out is to go outside and pull your your gray valve and let the air bubble out. I mean, I've got down here and did CPR on it and everything else, and it didn't help. Uh, so uh, I ran into a, um, a gentleman that told me about, I'll show you outside later, a vent cover that, that helped. Uh, well, uh, 
some. Uh, well, I haven't done it yet on the gray. I did it on the black. That's another issue. But anyway, so what we did do is, uh, let's get underneath here. Uh, the, uh, let's see if you can see up underneath there how this thing is configured. Uh, before it had a P trap right here just like underneath your normal sink it came down here and had a a, a, a P trap it went around and then it came down here down through the ground and then it went uh, over to the underneath the, the uh, bathroom and then into the gray tank. And if you get underneath there and look at your casita underneath on the plumbing, it's a, it's a miracle it works at all. I mean, it goes uphill, downhill, 90 degree turns, then back uphill into the other side of the tank. Uh, and the drain is, is a, a very small, like, drain like that and it would drain slow anyway so what I did was I had the peak trap took peak trap out and uh, put this hypo valve hip valve anyway if you've got a newer casita you've got one of these underneath your shower which I've had to replace uh, and uh, because I guess it came from the factory cracked up here on this little deal and, and uh, up here and became a leak. Anyway, so I replaced that and uh, also uh, did uh, what they call a gray tank uh, uh, fast dump kit, uh, which consisted of a clear plastic hose that goes between your uh, gray tank and the uh, uh, vent line, which comes out uh, In the closet in here uh, let me turn a little light on uh, right there and goes up to the roof okay uh, I guess that scene helped it uh, with the uh, the air bubbles in the sink uh, as on our last trip it uh, it didn't have the uh, air bubble and fill the, the sink with water I did have a bit of dripping from the connections here which were a, believe it or not it was a beast to get all those uh, not the leak and so when it did finally great fill up of course <clears throat> Normally, it comes up in your sink when it fills all the way up in, in your shower basin, okay? So when the, it filled up and it got up here past this, I did have a bit of a drip here. But that's the only time I had a leak. But you can see, uh, I don't know, if you go look at yours with a P-trap, that it comes down you know in here taking that out and putting that in opened up a, a, a whole lot of space there uh, so that was an upgrade on that uh, sorry for the air conditioning noise uh, where we're at it's uh, like 11 o'clock and it's already up to 94 so it's gonna be another hot day uh, what else have we upgraded all the uh, cushions okay uh, the cushions that came with it they were okay and everything but they were about half these size this size and uh, I felt like I was bottoming out in it and then if you ever try to sleep on it it was uh, it was like the rack from some horror movie uh, but so I had uh, we had these made they're uh, uh, a 
a uh, like a vinyl simulated leather uh, product, uh, really a thick material. We got you can. Uh, I've got uh, to pick my own cushion uh, softness or what have you. And uh, we had there's the lady down in uh, Waco at Clifton Upholstery. She actually makes the uh, cushions for Casita. And uh, so she custom made these. We went down there. She knows what size the fit it and all that. We picked out our materials and uh, uh, that was also uh, during COVID. So uh, her business was hit pretty hard with COVID, but she got them out in a timely manner and uh, did a really good job on that. And I've been really happy with those. Not only is the cushioning better, but for me, when you're sitting on a, uh, a, a chair like this, it was always like very uncomfortable. You know, your the the back cushion didn't give you any support at all while you were sitting there. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, let me turn this fan off. It's making a racket here. Oh, there you go. That's much better. Uh, don't know why that, that one fan there, you can see we got all manner of fans up there that, uh, circulate the airs, mainly when we are sleeping. Uh, we, uh, also, uh, use CPAPs and, uh, we both have what is, uh, called a, uh, air mini CPAP. It's, it all fits in that bag that bag right there uh and uh we both have one we open that up and she's a inside sleeper so the hose goes there i usually set mine like right there and plug in underneath the table here uh you know you could probably reroute it but in the morning I just get, we just get it up and roll it and put it in there and close her up and it's out of the way. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can think of in here that I haven't already mentioned. Uh, put a strong urge everyone to get a, a shut off valve going to their toilet. Uh, we've got uh, some of these things like this little thing right here. We, uh, and that's a, a thing with uh, wet wipe things in it. This right here is like a little trash can uh, that uh, we actually don't flush paper down our toilet. Uh, we uh, put it in a Ziploc and haul it off, but instead of putting a Ziploc un underneath there, uh, we've got this thing that opens automatically. Uh, speaking of this thing right here, I don't think I mentioned this on my last one. We had a constant problem in here of uh, moisture inside there and water. It wasn't coming from the drain. Some people have a problem with it. Uh, the, the bottom part of the drain cracking and leaking. Uh, I don't know if it's condensation against that wall or, or what. <clears throat> but what we did uh, to help with that is uh you know it took back to the casita and they said they redid the seal in it and everything and it didn't make you know it, it they, they didn't do anything uh put this little uh drip gutter right here that allows the water to run off and not run up uh, in or underneath there some people actually get these and put them over their windows on the outside you know uh, so, you know, your air conditioner, if you're down here in the south, your air conditioner runs, you get condensation, it runs down across your windows. And I think probably the, I don't know why they don't have a drain tube on those that uh, functions, but uh, if you 
kind of tilt your your casita over a little bit to where it drains in the area that you want it to that's one way to fix it also if you have you of course you want your your trailer to be level for your air conditioning i mean your refrigeration system and uh for comfort but also if you uh have it tilted just a little bit uh and this this is like the water tank over here and on this side over here is, would be your your gray and black tank and your hoses it goes out that way if you tilt it just a little bit that way i think it also helps with the gray tank draining but uh uh it really uh believe it or not it really helps with all your drainage issues and and what have you uh now you want to keep it level for this because uh, uh, that will mess up your uh, refrigerator uh, if it hasn't been, if you've been like, they say even if you've been driving over roads and bit got unleveled and what have you, that you need to let it set for 30 minutes to two hours or something before you turn it on. I've never really done that, uh, but uh, it's just something to be aware of. You don't want to let it set with it running unlevel for you know any time at all um let's see here the doors on the casita oh we also i moved my awnings bracket in here it came with these little clips and they also has a little rubber things that you can put over here but on the top and bottom uh but i don't know where those are uh and your your awning crank handle it also came with little clips that I put into this piece of wood. This is held on by just your uh, 3M tape up against the casita. I didn't drill any holes in it. Uh, this sliding door here, uh, it worked pretty good, but now it being a couple years old, you can see how it kind of hangs there on those little screws. Sometimes you have to get out here and, and work. It's a good concept. It just kind of uh you know sometimes you have i guess with age or something i don't know i don't know if there's why it's doing that but uh it is a it can be a a bit of a pain uh uh this i replaced the velcro on here because that's kind of what holds the the little levers together and uh, sometimes you have to do that. I don't know if you saw that. I'm going to do that again for you. Uh, see how it's, so you can go up here and uh, work it. Of course, it's not going to stick now. But anyway, it kind of sticks there. Okay, that's open where you can see through. So, okay, I'm going to close it. Oh, I don't want to close. Okay. So, what it is, is sticking in these little slots here. So, he can do that. But, anyway, that's the problem with that. The doors have an issue, anyway. I don't know exactly why. But, if you get... They... You have to adjust them all the time and tighten them. Uh, and you got to be careful on opening and closing your door. Uh, when you, you when you close it, you don't close it with this bar here when it's all hooked together. You grab this. Let's say there's play in it and there's play in it, and uh, it won't it won't it won't close good. Basically, you have to pull it to, and then grab this, like so, and that will close it. And if it gets off level just a little bit, uh, it won't want to open. We uh, had this upgraded to this lock here. You can see how the, the weather has uh, broke, cracked the plastic on it. I have one coming in. They have a, I guess they've decided that, oh yeah, well there's a problem with that. 
So they have a, a plastic replacement piece that's actually it's supposed to be showing up today. And uh, I'll see how hard that is to where that doesn't work. But you get a little bit off center, like you pull, but what happens is you'll pull into a, a parking lot or something and let's say, you, oh, well, I need to go in the trailer and, and, and pee or something. And uh, so, you know, oh yeah, I really need to go. I'll just run in the trailer quick. Invariably, it doesn't work uh, because it's crooked. And you can get the key and unlock it manually and you gotta push on it just about right here, both to open it and to close it good for some reason. Because uh, it'll hang up on you and you'll freak out and think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to break the window out and all that. Uh, but usually if you, you push it here and uh, use the keys. I've also had the battery go out on it twice at random times and uh, that will lock it up and uh, freak you out too but you can use the key then and do it manually uh so the door yeah i guess it is what it is the uh i've talked before about the screws on the awnings they only have like not much holding on one little b screw up there and then the, the rivets up there where it goes in i had a uh have that I've tightened it all up but I've had to uh, do the rivet up there I've also uh, had uh, one two three other rivets break but uh, I guess that's just the, most of them broke in the first uh, year I guess um, what else have we done out here of any importance uh, that's about it on that the uh, aluminum box that we had uh, or stainless steel aluminum. I don't know anyway it's very light I guess it is aluminum but anyway it's made out of this stuff uh, the guy made that did a good job it's holding together fine and I figured out that you can pull this thing completely off you can undo your tanks and tilt them one side or the other and get them out uh, yeah, this is the other deal that we put on here. This is on the black tank. Uh, we had black tank holders. Uh, and uh, uh, a guy told me that, oh, okay, well, you're not venting and blah, blah, blah. He had one of those. He swore by them. I bought one. And I guess that seems to help. Uh, uh, the... Uh, handle on this is still working good I still pull it down I use both hands and support it and easily move it down uh, I put a little vegetable oil in my toilet uh, every now and then to help lube those things and uh, uh, when we're not using it I come out here and work the valves just to, to make sure uh, that they're not getting stuck. Uh, I, uh, I've had to replace uh, some things. I accidentally didn't turn off the, uh, the electric switch there one time and left it on. And then when I turned the water on and bled it out, it overheated. And, blew this out it's kind of a circuit breaker thing for the hot water burned up my uh, element of course i've replaced and washed out the uh the heater and put a new uh, uh one of those uh, uh can't think of what it is it's what brain dead but there's a rod in there that uh attracts uh chemicals and minerals and stuff that would eat up your uh, your hot water heater and uh, it eats that rod instead of inside of your heater uh, I uh, do however had a little bit of leak in here on the last trip I don't know if this thing 
pressure relief there that's going out on me. It looks like you might be able to get a wrench on that and back it off and put another one in pretty easy. Sometimes those things turn out to be a whole lot harder than they uh, start out to be. Uh, let's see back here. Everything's about the same old word about the uh, uh, boosters. We have the Wi-Fi, the cell phone booster. Uh, spent a lot of money on those. And uh, actually, everywhere we go, there's not uh, much use for it because you either have signal or you don't. And uh, uh, if you don't have signals, there's nothing to boost. So that might be something that, you know, unless they, you get some kind of a satellite thing. Uh, yeah, you can see the water running off right now. Uh, uh, Straight your windows, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these little items right here have been very good. I've had, I bought, done it once. I had to do them again. The sun got to them and, and uh, tore them up. I also, underneath the bed where you, the entry door is to get to your, uh, your bypass switch for your hot water heater that you have to uh, turn when you winterize and stuff. I've actually put one of those uh, on that door down there. One being on the the bottom of the uh, the your dining room table that your your mattress sets on, and the other on the door. And that kind of helps when you have to crawl underneath there when we winterize and stuff. Uh, what else? Oh, tires. Now, I replaced the tires this year. Uh, this was a 2019. And uh, we had uh, 20, we just put 20,000 miles on this trailer in uh, the uh, four years that we've had it. And uh, I uh, never had any punctures, never had any flats. Uh, we, uh, I kept mileages and stuff on them. Uh, what was the disheartening part was, I'm like, you know, I'm checking the 30 seconds on my tire depth and what have you. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll probably have to change these next year or so, you know, we're, uh, you know, we'll be coming up on about five years and they still look good, but uh, no punctures, still had 30 seconds on it. And I retold, uh, uh, I uh, rotated uh, my tires. Uh, I followed uh, the instructions on this. Let me get back here where you can see it. Uh, make it a little bit better. Uh, the uh i uh took the advice of uh, rv adventures uh on youtube and rotated my tires uh but anyway the the <laughs> the deal is is like okay and i started looking at the all the tires and all the discussions on inflation and brands and blah blah but weights and all that kind of thing and uh uh, being a, uh, retired, uh, uh, service leader, uh, from, uh, running, uh, truck, uh, maintenance facilities and dealing with all the Michelins and the, all the different manufacturers and what the training on tires and what have you. Uh, I started looking and I looked at the DOT numbers, which is a number when they make a tire, every tire has a, a date that they were made. They also have a identification number to know uh, uh, everything about it. In fact, uh, uh, to the point that uh, the company that I worked for had actually <laughs> rented uh, a couple of rental units to one to the guy that before the twin towers came down they ran a uh, a vehicle up in there 
with a bomb in it. They were going to try to blow it up. And uh, the, all they did was, uh, anyway, they weren't successful, thank goodness, then on, on tearing it up. But th uh, they were able to track down that vehicle uh, who rented it and all that by the VIN number from the, the company that I worked for and owned it. And also the uh, Oklahoma City bomber, uh, they were able to uh, track down who rented that vehicle and was, you know, because of the, the records that the company kept on them. But anyway, so I, I knew about the, the tire <clears throat> date and manufacturer and all that stuff. And they can trace that back because it is a uh, commodity that uh, is a cradle to grave kind of a thing. Not as much as like uh, uh, some other hazardous waste, but companies that buy tires uh, in, in bulk and stuff like that have a responsibility to, to handle the, the waste material of the tire from uh, what they call cradle to grave. But anyway, the tires on my 2019 uh, trailer were basically 2017 tires. So they sat somewhere for two years before they put them on my vehicle. I ordered my vehicle in uh, uh, February and we got it in, uh, uh, in June uh, back then in 2019. It had 2017. So the tires were, were over really over two years old uh on my new trailer and so you go to any you go to modern i mean uh, discount tire or any of these vendors they're going to tell you that uh, the age date especially with trailers that set out in the sun in texas uh all year or uh, you know uh, uh they they should they'll tell you to replace them in a heartbeat i was kind of hated to do it uh because they still look good uh but i get it and it's better to go ahead and in my my thoughts was it's better to go ahead and bite the bullet instead of having it blow up and mess up my fiberglass fender well and maybe cause injury or uh to equipment and people and everything else so but i was very disappointed i understand they they have tires that they they need to rotate out of their inventory but two years is plenty of time for them to uh to to handle that uh you know uh and uh anyway so i, I had a, one of the things i had to do this year was was that the replace the tires also had the uh bearings and uh, uh brakes uh replace the bearings on it even though the bearings that were on it were probably really good i greased them every year uh and uh you know by the process that the axle manufacturer shows you how to do it with the uh uh bearing uh i don't know buddy or whatever they call it the easy grease uh the, the guys that uh actually did my uh uh uh, work on it there with the bearings and the the brakes the brakes were still good uh, so we didn't do much to them but the uh, uh, bearings I had them replaced and they put of course uh, that synthetic uh, super duty synthetic grease in there and uh, which I was using all along high temperature all, all the stuff for specs they do it. The guy I do, the guys that do that for me are a little home on the road up there. They've been casita workers working on casitas and trailers for a lot longer than I've had one, and it's kind of a generational thing with them. But uh, the uh, the advice that the guy told me was, don't fool with it. Uh, it should be good for another twenty thousand miles. Uh, you know. If you if you're greasing them every year, that synthetic grease should not go bad uh, in that amount of time, and uh, you're going to do more danger to your your trailer by greasing it all the time because uh, what happens is is there's just a little seal in there that holds the grease in, 
and uh, your pressure and grease through it, even though it does go through the axle and come back through the bearings and everything, that's your 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 uh, wall of safety between letting the grease out, getting it on your brakes, uh, you get a hop with the friction, catch on fire. Your bearing will start; it, it'll lose the grease. It'll it'll start seizing up, and you next thing you know, you got to get a new axle or worse, you know, your tire caught on fire and, and you know, so uh, I thought I was kind of surprised. I had to ask him a couple of times, you mean you don't want me to do anything to it? Well, it's set up right unless you have some kind of a problem come along, you know, like uh, maybe some weird tire wear or something, or maybe uh, you, you hit something and bend your axle, you know, that causes a problem that you're probably more, uh, you might be doing more damage to them than not. I don't know, that's a lot of people gonna disagree with that, but uh, uh, I, when I did my grease on my uh, uh, axles, uh, the grease I was seeing come out was not that much different than the grease that I was putting in. And uh, you're squirting, uh, uh, you know, you got, two spindles that you're working on and uh, it would uh, use two big tubes uh, and a grease gun uh, you know to get that done that's a lot of grease to be pushing through there so uh, it, it, you know I'll take his word for it uh, anyway uh, I trust him uh, and uh, anyway that's the deal on the tires and the what have we done here? That's uh, the uh, air conditioner heater has been fine. Uh, I found uh, in the winter that I like using the uh, gas heater uh, down here. Uh, you know, it's much quieter uh, than this thing over your bed. Uh, even though this usually is enough heat uh, to warm this up in here, uh, but they work together on the thermostat. But if you put it on gas only, uh, that thing is very quiet. It really will warm this place up. The next thing I, I really want to do is on the bathroom door, speaking of heat, uh, I've seen folks that put a vent in like right there and some of them put a vent right here and then another one up there you know and then just kind of move the mirror in between but uh, the uh, it allows they say they allows the heat to come in and uh, you know and also cool to come in in the summertime uh, where it's not really hot or cold in there. When it gets cold, what we've done up till now is we just leave that door open uh, uh, most of the time and it will, it will stay warm in there. Now, uh, the gray, the black tank smell. I don't know, this is getting, oh, this is way long. Uh, sorry about that. The black tank smell has got a lot better. We, uh, uh, watched um, uh, on YouTube enjoying the journey they had a guy do their tanks uh, from clean tank he uh, is in the business of cleaning holding tanks uh, on trailers and what have you if it has a tank he'll clean it out but what he said this guy from clean tank uh, is that uh, he uses a mixture of pine saw and Culligan's bath beads. You on his side at clean tanks. He's got all the why and how, and uh, uh, you mix that up about I don't know fifty fifty or so, and you put that in there. He uh, says that the your black tank is not a septic system. It's a holding tank, and uh, the guy originally there from. Uh, uh, enjoying the journey i think he had problems with his sensors he has a big 
a ginormous uh, trailer, but he, uh, with washing machines and all kinds of other uh, items, but uh, I think he had sensor problems. And that guy goes, well, if you're putting all the chemicals in there for a, uh, like it's a septic system, you know, chemicals that um, which breaks down the the waste and and uh, makes it easier to flush. He goes, that is complete baloney. It's not a septic system. It's a holding tank. And so by breaking that stuff down in there, what it does, it turns into a goo and it sticks to the side of the tanks and the corners. If you have those sen sensors or what have you in there, it sticks to those. And, uh, you know, we all know if we had children or whatever, that the poo is some sticky stuff, you know, it will stick to stuff. And if it ever gets hard, you know, and dry, you got to get a hammer and chisel to get it off. But anyway, uh, he uh, was saying the most important thing to do is use a lot of water. You use a lot of water. You drive with it with lots of water in it and let it shake around. And then when it gets full, you dump it, okay? And then as much as possible, you can get one of those little whirly gig things that goes on a water hose, in our case, with a casita and stick down there. He goes from the outside with a rotor rooter hose thing, much similar to the one that that we guys use to, to stick down the, the toilet to wash out the tank. But... Uh, uh, and he does that until it gets clean and, uh, it, uh, anyway, uh, you, you get all those problems. Well, anyway, he says that that's the way to do it. Uh, that's, you shouldn't have any smell waters on top. You know, there's a water thing there that, that, that protects the odor from, you know, just like a pea trap on your sink, you know, it's supposed to keep the water from the barrier to keep the smell out but anyway he said that uh, wash them out as as you know as many times as you can and uh in his case you know he has a business and he has franchises everywhere that do this cleaning uh that uh you know if he gets there and cleans it out he should be good for maybe a year or two if you you know practice you know you don't don't leave the black open, close it, fill it up, use lots of water. And he says, use this pine saw uh, bath bead uh, product mixture. And uh, uh, it it covers the smell and uh, it kind of slick it's everything up in there, lubes everything up a little bit in there to where everything goes easily. But he says, you do not want a bunch of 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 uh goo in there uh that you just let it it's a holding tank anyway i uh, know i've taken you too long i'm sorry for that if there's anybody in the world that's ever listened to this to the end uh thank you uh, a lot please like subscribe subscribe share give me a comment uh if there's any questions on any of this stuff uh i'll be glad to uh try to help you out so Happy trails. Bye-bye.